morning. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Magnify him, Jesus. We worship you this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. All glory, all honor, all majesty be unto you, Jesus. All glory, all honor, all majesty, all worship be unto you this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, the scripture says, God remembered Noah. And in verse 5, we are told it was on the 10th month. On the 10th month. It said the waters decreased and the tops of the mountains we are seeing. Every hidden, denied area of your life, this is your month of remembrance. I said this is your month of remembrance. In Esther chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, the Bible speaks concerning into the bedroom of the king. And I had God's servant say to us in the second service that favor, that love brings friendship, and friendship will bring you into the bedroom of your lover. All of it is working together for your good today. You are entering into places this month that you only know by a dream, but they will become physical for you this month. Your name will be mentioned in places you never imagined. You will be invited into places you never thought. And that in this 10th month, in this 10th month, and it will be initiated by favor. And you are excited today is our covenant day of favor. So get set for the very best that life has to offer in the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus as you please take your seat. It's my privilege to share with us in this third service on this first Sunday of the month of October. A privilege given me by a servant in the house for which I am excited and at the same time very, very grateful. Praise the Lord. We had the first service and the second service very, very strangely powerful. The atmosphere was thick with God's presence. I want to employ you to get the CDs, get out there, get some for yourself. You need to keep hearing and hearing. If you have not had them, you have not had anything. So get the, get the tapes and the Lord of my heritage in Christ. That's our theme for the month of October. And the scripture for the theme is Matthew 5, 14. Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. That means you are a pace setter in this world, a trailblazer in this world, a living example that men should see and see God as he is. You are the God on this earth because God is light. God is light. The the God that men must see. Anything that does not look like God is coming under the dagger of the Almighty in the name of Jesus. What is breakthrough? Breakthrough is unexplainable yet undeniable progress. That's what you are having this month. Just like the story of Peter. Fished all night in Luke chapter 5, he caught nothing. But then, is life. Breakthrough is making progress despite opposition and hatred. In Genesis 26, we are told they hated Isaac. They hated him. But yet, they began to envy him. In the same place where they hated him, they began to envy him. 
in the same place, on the same ground where there was famine, he had hundredfold return. Somebody is here. The table is turning in your favor this month. I said the table is turning in your favor this month. And I see a living example in the modern day Israel. We are spiritual Israelites. The modern day Israel has a population of 0.2% compared to the population of the world. But yet, has 22% of the noble price of the whole world. Strange. Living in the desert, difficult place, but yet exporting food. Somebody is here, what you never imagined is what you will see this month. Where you never thought you would step into is where you will step into this month. What you never imagined could happen will happen this month. It's our month of breakthrough. It's our month of breakthrough. And that brings us to the title of the message we'll be running all through the month of October on Sundays, titled Unveiling the Breakthrough Power of Love. Unveiling the Breakthrough Power of Love. And we'll be looking at part 1C of it in this third service. So, love for God demonstrated through kingdom stewardship is a platform for empowerment for breakthrough. Jesus said in John 14, 21, he said, they who obey my commandment are those that love me, and I will manifest myself unto them. I will, I will demonstrate my ability unto them. God said concerning Pharaoh that he kept Pharaoh alive in order to demonstrate his power, uh, his negative side, to show it on Pharaoh and Egypt. Now, but God also shows his positive side. And you are the one chosen this month. I say you are the ones chosen this month. In the name of Jesus. Now, what is love? Everything about God, we are told, in the first and the second service is definable. That is, anything in God is definable. That is, you can place your finger on it. You can describe exactly what it is. Uh, the word of God is not just to be imagined. It's designed for reality. So what is love? Number one, love is giving your heart to God. Giving your heart to God. Proverbs 23, 26, he said, My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Where your heart is, is where your love is. Where your heart is, is where your love is. God is saying, what I describe or what I define as love is your heart panting for God. Panting for God. The heart is the place of passion. Is the place of passion. What you are passionate about is what is where your heart is. And that's what you love. So God is saying, give me your heart. Be passionate about me. Be passionate about my kingdom. Uh -huh. That's when we can say you love the Lord. We are told about David in 1 Samuel 13, 14, that the scripture says uh, God described David as a man after his own heart. That is a man whose heart is passionate after God who has passion for God. And uh, God is always looking for the heart. He's always looking for the heart. That's why we are told in Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep it, keep it, keep it. That means you have a responsibility to point it in the direction it must go. You have that responsibility. And God is, and we are saying here right now, what you call love is when you point your heart to be passionate about God. You point it in God's direction. God said, give me your heart. Engage your heart for me. And that is the proof of love. Number two, what is love? Love is loving whatever God loves. Loving whatever God loves. Now, you see two people who have affection for each other, who fall in love. And then you see... Gradually, 
they begin to stop certain things because of their partner. Sometimes, you see, the other partner is even demanding. If we have to continue, you have to stop this thing. And then he decides he must stop. Why? Because of whom he loves. Because of whom he loves. If you really love God, you will love what God loves. The proof that you love God is that you love what God loves. What does God love? John 3, 16. God loves souls, for God loves the world. And he gave his only begotten son. God loves souls. He loves souls in the world. He loves souls in the world. Matthew 16, 26, as a matter of fact, tells us, God described and defined a soul as what to him the whole world put together. The whole world put us to show how much he loves the souls of men. So you don't love souls of men. You don't love God. Jesus confronted Peter in John 21, verse 15 to 17. Do you really love me? Okay, look at it. Do you love me more than this? Do you love me? If you truly love me, you must love my lambs. You must love my sheep. That is God's own measurement of love. So if you truly love God, you will love what God loves. And what does he love? The souls of men the souls of men. So we are called to reach out, get souls saved. That's the demonstration of love. Get Pray for them to be established. See to it that they are rooted in the house of God. Then you are demonstrating that love. You are demonstrating that love. So there is no ambiguity here. It's very clear what love of God is. It's not just to sing it or just to carry an emotional and funny looking appearance and to say, to show that you love God. No, it's in the things you do. And that's what we are saying here. Number three, what is love? It is having a God-first lifestyle. It is having a God-first lifestyle. Having a God-first lifestyle. The nature of man is selfishness. That's what drove us out of the Garden of Eden. Now, but what will take you back is the love for God. Love kills selfishness. When you love, who you love or what you love automatically is first. If anything comes between, you are not at rest. That's how it is. That's how it is. Love is having a God-first lifestyle. Matthew 22 from verse 36 to 40. They asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? And he said to them, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That is everything together. This is the first and the great commandment. Even the second is like unto the first. So it's both number one and number two. That is have God first and have God second at the same time. That's what we call love. That's the proof of it. That is the proof of it. Being passionate about God. Always thinking, engaging, talking, and doing God. That's the proof. Now, number four, what is love? It is placing God above all else, including yourself. Including yourself. You can place a thing above all things, but putting it above yourself, and that's the serious task. And that's the proof of love, placing God above yourself. Now, Luke 14, verse 26 to 18, we saw what Jesus said here. He said here that if you will come after me, you must hate your father and your mother. We are told in the second service that word hatred is not talking about to hate in the natural sense. It talks about priority. That is, if you will follow me, this is how to follow me. This is the proof of your love. This is how we demonstrate love that is acceptable to God. He said, you must hate your father, your mother, hate everything. That is, place me before them. Place me before them. Consciously put them after me. Consciously put them after me. That is what is love. Now, but what is in love that engenders breakthrough. 
Remember, this month breakthrough is your heritage in Christ. Your heritage in Christ. That word heritage means inheritance. So, by reason of salvation, you have an inheritance of breakthrough. You are marked out to break and go through. But every breaking requires some form of empowerment. And uh, love is the platform that we are looking at this month. Why? Because love is above all else. Thank God for other forms of breakthrough. There is faith, there is hope, there are many things that can enable you to break through. But love is the greatest of them all. It makes available the greatest of power to break and go through. Somebody is here. Generational hindrances will be broken for you this month. That is impossible cases. Things that only God can make happen. Uh, you will see them happen for you this month. So what is in love that engenders breakthrough? Number one, love enhances access to revelations. Revelations. Now the Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 7, God made his ways known unto Moses. He gave revelations to Moses. And by those revelations, Moses began to do the acts of God. The things that were happening by the hands of Moses are things only God can do. Uh, revelations, when God gives to you and you engage them, you get results after the order of God. After the order of God. Because you were initially servants, but love has made you friends. That is, I no longer call you servant. Now you are my friend. We have been working together. We are in love. So you have graduated from servanthood to friendship. And because you are now my friend, I can't hide anything again from you. I can't hide anything again from you. Everything the Father shows me, I must show you. And that's what love makes happen. Love breeds trust among lovers. And true lovers trust, and they prove their trust by unveiling secrets to one another. So, love compels sharing of secrets. So, the more you love God, the more you assess the revelations of his word. And of course, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things he has kept. For they that love him, thank God for the testimonies we share today. But as you increase in your love life, your own testimony will be the greatest. Things that eyes have not seen, those are the things that God will be making happen to you. Of course, we remember the story of Abraham. When God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, can I do this thing without talking, discussing it with my friend Abraham, Genesis 18, verse 17 to 19. That is, God condescended down to the level of a man to share his secret, to share his plan. That's what love makes happen. We saw the story of Job in love with God. And in Job chapter 1, we saw how he was sacrificing every day, demonstrating his love for God. And then in Job 29 verse 4, he came by the secrets of God that made him the richest in his time. Of course, we know the story of Daniel. We know the story of Joseph. They were stars that were made by the secrets God revealed to them. And they qualify for those secrets by demonstrating their love for God. You know, what love does is it leads you into marriage. Who you love, you marry you begin to look like what you love. Who you love, you marry. And uh, when a man marries a woman, that woman now has equal access to everything the man owns. So, you see, every time you open the Bible, it opens to you. Every time you pray, you hear God. Why? Uh, everything God has, you now have a right to it. Love has married you off to him. Is somebody excited here? You are going to see strange things this month. And strange things will happen in your life this month. Number two, love empowers our faith to deliver maximally. Galatians 5, 6 tell, tells us, faith worketh by love. Faith worketh by love. And 1 Corinthians 13, 2 tells us, if you do not have love, it doesn't matter what you have. It will amount to nothing. 
Anything not demonstrated in love will end in failure. It will end in failure. So, faith works maximally through love. How is that? Now, when you love, love leads to marriage. And marriage gives ownership. That is, look, it doesn't matter what your husband has. The moment you are married, in case you divorce, they will split everything and give you half. So, you, while you are married, you have a right to all, all that the man has. Now, what is faith? Faith is simply taking what God has. Is the process of taking what God has and he has given. Uh, that's what you call faith, the process of taking it. So, and love empowers faith in that all restricted access is given by love. So your faith works like fire as your love is increasing. Your faith works like fire as your love increases. You have the audacity to ask anything from your lover, knowing that he will give you. Your lover cannot refuse you. He cannot refuse you. So your faith works like fire. Love makes you a corner of all that God has. And so unrestricted access, they answer even before you call for them. And that is how love sets your faith on fire. Number three, love facilitates answers to our prayers. Love facilitates answers to our prayers. You see, when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9, they said, teach us how to pray. And he began to teach them to pray. Half of what he told them to pray was targeted as tearing up their love. Yeah, telling them, look, forgive anyone who has offended you. Forgive anyone who has offend, offended you. And all of that, all of that are practices of love. Practices. So if you forgive, then your father also will forgive you. You forgive, your father also will forgive you. Now, that is your prayers get answered faster and cheaper as you love God. As you love God. Now, it was love that drove Elijah against the prophets of Baal. He kept saying in 1 Kings 19 verse 10 and 14, I am jealous for the Lord God. I am jealous for the Lord God. I am jealous. Uh, that's another word to, to use to say I'm in love. I'm in love with God. I mean, that was what pushed him. That was why when he called for fire, it answered instantly. When he called for fire, it answered instantly. We see also in John 15, 16, where the scripture says, God has called us to save souls. He said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give you. That is, look, as you are demonstrating love, uh, your access to the Father to get answers to prayers is enhanced. Anything you ask, he said, it will be done for you. Anything you ask, he said, it will be done for you. We see the story of Solomon. How in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, he was busy demonstrating his love for God. Killed 1,000 1, burnt offerings. And we saw how God came down to ask Solomon. He didn't wait for Solomon to pray. He came down, prompted Solomon, pray, ask me. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Uh, others are looking for God, but God is looking for lovers. He's looking for them, answering them before they call. Even after Solomon prayed, he still told him what more he needed to have asked. He didn't ask, and he vowed to add it. He vowed to add it. Now, all through the remaining days of this year, you will experience various serious additions of good all through this year, all through this year, all through this year, all through this year, through this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't you see how lovers, human beings do? 
you enter a supermarket. It is something else you went for. But then you see something else, and you begin to imagine how it will look on your lover. This earring will be good or not. This chain will be very, very good. Okay, okay, okay. And that's not what you went for. So the life of lovers is life of continual addition. It flows from up to down, always, all the time. So God keeps hardening to the lover. The life and experience of a lover is experience of continual addition. Continual addition. Continual addition. Each new addition is to beat the former. Each new addition is to be better than the former. And that's the experience of lovers. That will be your experience throughout the remaining days of this year. Uh, you will never refuse giving anything to your lover. What you don't want to give anyone when your lover comes, you will give it. You will give it. You will give it. Somebody said, when you want to give, you measure. You measure to give. But when lovers give, uh, they give emotionally. They don't measure. They just give. They just give. They don't measure. It's giving without measurement. That's what you do when you are responding to love. Somebody is here. A very unusual experience will be yours this year. Yeah. Number four. Love enhances access to wisdom from above. Love enhances access to wisdom from above. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing how to do it. Knowing how to do it and doing it. Uh, and if we talk about the wisdom of God, we are talking about how God does it. That's just like the number one. Where Jesus said in John 15, 15, Again, he said there, he said, look, you are now my friends because we are in love. And because you are my friend, anything shown me, I will show you. Anything shown me, I will show you. So, love grants you unfettered access to the wisdom of God. It's the ways of men that can be stopped, but the ways of God has no rival. The ways of God has no rival. All the wisdoms in this world, none can compare to that of God. It doesn't matter who is on the other side. When you engage the wisdom of God, you come out on top. Now, love is also walking with God. Walking with God. Now, Proverbs 13, 20, he says there that, he says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Love stems out of a walk. And as you continue to walk with God, you imbibe the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is seen in your life. Love leads to marriage, like I said earlier. And you are married, you become one with the one you love. That's why the scripture tells us in Ephesians 3, verse 17 to 19. He said, you will be filled with the love, with the fullness of God. When you love God, you become one with God. You are filled with the fullness of God. And then look at the story of Jesus. Jesus said in John 10, 30, I am my father, I am one. We have become one. I've loved him to a point I am one with him. That's why we are told in Matthew 13, verse 54, they said, where did this man get with this kind of wisdom from? We know him before. They knew him before he became one with God. By the time he became one with God, he began to manifest like God. They knew these manifestations were not him before. But love makes you one with God. It makes you one with God. And then you begin to behave and minister and operate as God. First John chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. First John chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. He said, and we have known and believed the love that God had for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him is one. And then look at verse 17. Here is, is our love made perfect. That is, this is the proof of love. This is the picture that you will see. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. In this world, you become God person. God personified. You begin to manifest as God. And the greatest proof of that is wisdom. 
wisdom. You begin to do as God does, having result after the order of God. Somebody is here. Where you have failed, you will win this time. I said you are going on top this time. In the name of Jesus. Now, today is our covenant day of favor. Covenant day of favor. God's servant said, what we teach is what we experience. As favor is taught, the spirit of favor comes on you this morning. As you receive the word on favor, empowerment for favor, empowerment for favor. Now, David has always, always been in his father's house. He had been there. And he has always been in the bush after animals. And then Samuel arrived in his father's house. And Samuel anointed him. And from then on, everything changed. Something else came on him. And we saw how he appeared before Saul. And Saul said, he has found favor in my sight. And we saw how the, the armor bearer of Saul was sacked the same day. And David became the armor bearer. Something strange is going with you from here. So just get set because that unction, that power is coming right over you this morning in the name of Jesus. Now what is favor? What is favor? Number one, favor is to be liked by God and people around you. There is love and there is like. Just like God's servant taught us first and second service today. Love is freely available, but like, there is always a reason for like. As we go on, we're going to be seeing that. But what you call favor is to be liked by God, to be liked by God. David said in First Chronicles 28 verse 4, he said, look, the reason why I was chosen above my brethren, they all had bigger chests than me. They were all taller than me. They were all older than me. But why was I picked before them all? Why was I chosen from among all of them? Because God liked me. Because God liked me. Because God liked me. So favor is to be liked by God. To be liked by God. They'll be liked by God. Now number two, favor means to be preferred above others. To be preferred above others. We all have the same size of brain. The same two eyes. The same two ears. But you are there at the back and then the person steps in and decides, no, you are the one I want to work with. What did the others do? They didn't do anything, but you are preferred above them. Preferred above them. Preferred above them. There was a testimony of a lady who had, um, she had um, Apollo. And um, she was to go for an interview. And she went for the interview wearing glasses, dark glasses. Obviously, nobody knew why she wore dark glasses. And um, she got there and found very many people waiting for the same interview. And then she told herself, well, now that I have Apollo, uh, uh, does that not reduce my chances? But he said, well, God, I look unto you to favor me. And the man who was to interview them, the boss, he stepped in, he came into the office late, stepped in, and then he began to shout from the entrance, I'm not going to see anybody today. I don't have time for anybody. I'm, I don't have time for this today. Everybody, we are hearing it. And as they are hearing it, their heart was sinking. But this lady said, Lord, I expect favor. I look for favor. And then the man turned. Now, you know, when you have Apollos, water will be coming out of the eyes. So he thought she was crying. He thought she was crying. So he saw tears. He said, I'm not seeing anybody except this one. Except this one. Except this one. Uh -huh. Now, you will go somewhere this month and they will tell you except you. That is except you. Except you. Except you. Others will be vying for it, but it will be reserved for you. That's what favor is in Daniel 6. Three, we are told about Daniel that Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. He was preferred above them because he had something, something that only God can give. 
God gave it to him and he had the edge over others. You are having the edge over everyone around you. Number three, favor is gaining access to everything you require. There is what you desire, but there is what you require. What you require is what you need. You don't know all that you need. What you desire is what you think you need. And, and you, that's only based on what you see, what you feel. Boy, do you know what will happen tomorrow? Do you know what is coming next year? God alone knows. So God is the one that gives what you require, what you require, what you require, what you require. Your desire is based on your thoughts. But what you require is based on what God knows you need. So favor is God supplying what you require. What you require. When Israel was to leave Egypt, he said, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. That means I'm going to give them what they require. They didn't know what they require. They didn't know they are going to go into the wilderness for 40 years. As at that time, they didn't know. They didn't know that they would build a tabernacle for God in the wilderness. They didn't, but God knew. He knew what they would need, so he got it for them. He got it for them. He got it for them. Somebody is here. What you will eat for the next 50 years will come into your hand this month. It will locate you and come into your hand this month. All the battles ahead of your life, he will win them for you this month. In the name of Jesus. So favor is the highway to the fortunes of life. It is the platform for supernatural breakthrough. Favor is the architect of every great destiny. We are told in Exodus 44 verse 3, the Israelites, their strange order of journey through the wilderness, Red Sea parted, uh, water came out of rock for them to drink, food came from clear sky. And the scripture summarizes it all to be that they experienced that because they were favored. Exodus and uh, Psalm 44, verse 3. He said, because they were favored. Because they were favored. So favor is the architect of every great destiny. We are told in Psalm 30, verse 5, in his favor is life. Is life. So the quality of life you live is the quality of favor you enjoy. Apostle Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. That word grace also means favor. By the favor of God. That is the favor of God that has brought me this far. And we see all of those strange examples in the scriptures. Somebody like Daniel, he came into Babylon as a slave. And he determined to serve God, stay with God. And then we saw how later in chapter 6 verse 3, he was preferred above other presidents. Everybody forgot he came into Babylon as a slave. We saw the story of Joseph, similar also got into Egypt as a slave and chosen from the prison and became prime minister. Eh, it's like they pick you from here and make you president of America because Egypt was the America of that time. And everybody forgot all the rules. They forgot where he came from. They forgot who he was because he was favored. Because he was favored. So favor makes impossible promotions. It creates strange order of liftings. That's what we are talking about. Look at the story of Mary in Genesis, in um, um, Luke one thirty. The scripture says there, an angel met her and said, thou art highly favored. Thou art highly favored. Now, being favored, exempted her from the normal rudiments of life. Every woman needs a man to be pregnant. This woman became pregnant without a man. Strange, strange. Somebody is here. Uh, you don't have what is needed. But hear me, they will need you. <laughs> now, now, you don't have what it takes to be there. You are not in the merit list. But the favor list is what they will look at this time. In the name of Jesus. He said to the Israelites, I will give these people favor. I will give them favor. And we saw what it means. We saw what it means. 430 years of bondage ended in one day. All the work they did for 430 years for which they were not paid. They were paid in one day. In one day. Listen to me. Somebody owing you will not sleep this night. Because of favor coming on your life. 
any organization holding what belongs to you, I decree, let there be a turning, and a turning, and a turning, and let that thing that belongs to you be dropped in your hand right now. In the name of Jesus. What about Noah? Who changed the mind of the Almighty because he was favored? Because he had favor. Noah found favor with God. He found favor with God. You see, what it is with favor is this. When you have favor, it works with God and man. It works with God and man. When you are favored, it works with God and it works with man. It works with God and it works with man. The man with favor cannot be rejected. He cannot be refused. What are the keys to operating in the realms of divine favor? Number one, new birth brings you into favor with God and man. Psalm 5 verse 12 tells us the righteous is surrounded by favor. Is surrounded by favor. And for 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 to 21 reveals to us when you are born again, then you are the righteousness of Christ in God. You become automatically righteous. And righteousness qualifies you for the favor that God gives. It qualifies you for the favor that God gives. So salvation puts favor in your account. Salvation puts favor in your account. It puts favor in your account. That is, you are a candidate chosen by God to be favored. Now, but you have to draw on the favor. You have to draw on the favor. It's just like you have money in your account. You have to sign the check. You have to get to the bank before you can draw it out. Favor is in your account by reason of salvation. So, but you have to draw it. How do you draw it? Now, Number two, how do you draw it? You draw it by serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom engenders supernatural favor. Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15. He said the time to favor Zion has come. The set time is now. Why? He said because he takes pleasure in the stones of Zion. Is concerned about the activities of God. Is engaging for the prosperity of the kingdom. So that's what has brought his favor nearer. That's the check that draws from the account. So seeking first the kingdom of God is the key to a world of supernatural favor. To be favored is to be made first. To seek God is to make God first. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. When you favor God, he will favor you in return. God loves you for who you are, but he likes you for what you do. We said that earlier. That is, favor, the love of God puts favor in your account. But the likeness of God is what draws it from the account. God loves us all the same way, every one of us, righteousness of Christ in God, all of us. That makes him love us. It makes him love us. But what enables you to draw from what love has put in your account is laboring in the kingdom, engaging for God and the expansion of his kingdom. It's one thing to be loved, it's another thing to be beloved. And we are told in the second service, we all have children. You love all your children the same way, but you find out because you're a human being, you will like one or two more than the others. Why? Because of what they do. Because of what they do for you. Because of what they do for you. Favor is supernatural partiality. So the liked man is the favored man. He will experience and enjoy supernatural partiality everywhere he goes. Praise the Lord. Number three. Sacrificial investment of our financial resources in promoting the kingdom procures favor. That is one other way to enjoy the favor of God is to engage your finances. Make God first in your expenditures and God will make you first in your income. Make God first in your expenditures and God will make you first in your kingdom. We saw how Solomon gave a thousand burnt offering. We saw how it was. God visited him with strange order of blessings. Strange order of blessings. There's a story in Luke 7 from verse 1 to 4 about a man 
who Jesus said he will come to visit. Why? Because he built a synagogue. He built a synagogue. When you make God first in your expenditure, he will make you first in your income. That's how it goes. Number four, engage in praise as a lifestyle. Engage in praise as a lifestyle. Now, look, Acts 2.47, the early church, we are together praising God and enjoying favor, enjoying favor, enjoying favor. So praise pushes you into favor. Praise is one other way to sign that check and draw from the favor in your account. And then number five, prophetic blessings. Now very soon God's servant will be coming up and then you'll be blessed again this morning and the reign of favor will come over your life. Now listen to this. Favor includes marital settlement. Proverbs 18.22, he said, he who has found the wife, find the good thing, and obtained favor. So favor is the capital for marriage. Somebody is here. As soon as this service is over, you'll find your husband on the road. Uh, somebody is here to be so fast before you leave here to happen. Somebody is here, your phone will start ringing. Somebody somewhere will no longer be able to sleep because you just receive favor. Favor includes promotion, like the story of Joseph. Where you are does not matter. Joseph was in the prison, and then he landed in the palace by favor. Uh, somebody will wake up in the morning, and they will call you for a place you never imagined your qualifications could get to. Favor includes supernatural fruitfulness. No man was with Mary, but yet... She had a child. I don't know what you lack that makes it impossible for you to have that thing. But favor will give it to you now. And of course, we remember the story of Nehemiah. How he also was favored. From a cup bearer, he became governor. It's a strange thing. If that man was to write his CV and post it, nobody would believe it. They would say, this one is a lie. How can he be cup bearer and then he became governor? What kind of promotion is that? That's the kind of promotion coming your way. Rise up on your feet, lift up your voice, give God the praise this afternoon. Give him the glory, give him the honor, magnify him, celebrate him this morning. I'm swimming in favor this morning. Favor is my heritage. I'm stepping into favor. I'm stepping into favor. I'm stepping into favor. I'm stepping into favor. Come on, lift up your voice and pronounce that over your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In one minute you are here, you know that you have not given your life to Jesus. Please allow me to pray with you. You are here and you know that you are not born again. Pick your bag, pick your Bibles wherever you are and quickly be on your way to the altar. Remember, the beginning of favor is salvation. Until you are saved, there is no favor in your account. Salvation is what puts favor in your account and then you can start drawing by the things you do by the things you do. Wherever you are, you know you are not born again. You are not enjoying favor. The good things of life are far from you. Come, 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 come. Come on now, come on now. And I want to say this, in case you are here, you thought you are born again. You thought, but you are wondering, am I really? You better come out now. By reason of the experiences you have. As the tree is, so is its fruits. Sometimes the things you are going through is the proof of who you are. Everything is down and it keeps going down. There's no hope inside. Maybe you are not born again. You only really thought you are. Come, come, come quickly. Come quickly, come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is here. He wants to save you. Jesus is here. He wants to accept you into the beloved. Come, come, come. Please allow me to pray with you this morning. There are quite a number of people on this side who need to come out here. Something is telling you and it's making you dilly down. You are wondering, should I go, should I not go? Your life depended, depends on this. You better come now. Come now. In the name of Jesus, all of those thoughts holding you back are banished and bound. You are loosed. Loosed to come now. Release. Release. Release to come. So start coming. Start coming. Start coming. Those chains are loosed. Start coming now. Start coming now. Start coming. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come right now. Come right now. Let Jesus be glorified. Let Jesus be glorified. Let Satan be put to shame. Wherever you are, come, 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 come. Come, come. I want to be born again. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Whichever one it is, Jesus is here. He wants to receive you. So come on now. If you are coming, come very fast. Now all of you in front, put your right hand on your chest. Your right hand on your chest, please. And say with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. 
This day, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, wash me clean from all my sins with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I am born again. Now, Father, accept the confessions of these ones. Perfect all that concerns them. And let your name be glorified in their fears. In the name of Jesus. Please go with our, our your uh, kingdom friends. They have some few more things to still share with you. Is somebody ready for the prophetic blessings? Lift up your hand and give God the praise.